Hello all, welcome. Uh, this is the second This is the second part of the tutorial in which I'll be explaining what I do. So for the auditory learners, this may this may help. Uh, so on this one we're also working on a 16 inch square canvas and using the cobalt metallic blue base. And I, when I use these colored bases, I mix them exactly as I would the, uh, the bloom colors. So for this size canvas, I, it's going to be like one part paint, one part uh, pouring medium, and probably two parts Floetrol. Just using the torch to pop the bubbles. Anytime you uh, mix paint or introduce air, uh, the bubbles form in the paint. And if you don't pop them, uh, the air displaces the paint and you'll just have a, a pinhole there where the air bubble was and no paint. So that's, that's why the bubbles are an important thing to get rid of. So same principle is the last tutorial starting with pearl white this one we're going to use the 24k deco art gold instead of bronze The layers end up being a little bit thinner when you do them with a, a stick rather than just pouring out the puddle. And I kind of like that look on this particular background. Just going to put a stir stick of cell activator. Start trying to blow the cell activator out over the colors. I don't even worry about how many petals or what they look like or any of that. We'll, we'll deal with that later. I'm going to do the same thing here again for the second bloom. Just laying down lightish layers of pearl and gold. Have to remember to put the little bit of extra base around the puddle so that you can blow it out easily. And because the cell activator seems to be heavier and it does sink, I do it last so it's still on top when I'm ready to blow out.
And these colors as they dry will deepen and the contrast will be even more striking between the gold and pearl and the the cobalt the cobalt dries probably maybe four shades darker it's beautiful beautiful dry color this easy palette is something that we can probably most of us can get our hands on these colors or something similar so I'm just adding a little bit of detail uh, you don't have to do this it helps I, I think it helps a little bit when you do spin it out kind of keeps them looking like something recognizable instead of just a blur of or blob of um, cells So for me, uh, I like to make sure there's plenty of paint at the edges of the canvas so that there's no, nothing to keep the blooms from stretching. Um, so if you've got dry canvas between your bloom and the, and the edge of the canvas, it will only go to the dry paint and won't go any further. So I like to make sure there's plenty, and I do on these little three three uh, bloom paintings I like to see the blooms just go over the edge not stretch you know unrecognizably but just to go over the edge I feel like that anchors them sort of to the canvas so that's what I'm doing I'm making sure there's paint it at all the edges before I spin this so that when it does spin the blooms will move uniformly and not be um, hanging up at any particular place. Gonna torch it again for the bubbles and then we'll spin it. Okay, I like this. The blooms are just off the edges and anchored to the canvas in my eyes. And I'll let this thing dry. There's 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 nothing to fix. I lo I like it the way it is. So just leave this one alone and take you in for a close up and you can see what it looks like and then uh, stay tuned for the dried results at the end 
and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate every one of you. Uh, makes the work worthwhile. <laughs>